Dan Oman, Matt Burney are taking a look at race number seven at Belmont Park on Friday. This race for two-year-olds. It's the $150,000 Tremont Stakes. And remember, if you bet with DRF Bets, all Belmont Stakes Racing Festival long, you get a 10% exacto winner's bonus. That's any race at Belmont Thursday through Saturday when you use your DRF Bets mobile device. Bets.drf.com is where you go for all of the details. Here's the field for the Tremont race number seven and of course wesley ward is going to be well represented he's got two in here and we'll start with the seven to five morning line favorite the number two maven from the highly anticipated first crop of triple crown winner american pharaoh the word was out on this horse matt before his debut all of the clockers at keeneland said he was blazing fast he went immediately to the front he opened up the lead he would get a little bit tired at the end of that race that's the way I looked at it. Showed that big speed, which we're sort of accustomed to seeing from the Wesley Ward two-year-olds. Went right to the front. But I thought he was getting a little bit choppy at the end of the race, feeling the effects of that first-time start. It's also worth noting that those top two finishers, they both went one-two the entire way around. So who knows what else was really running behind. Uh, and I find it a little bit interesting. You see that 84 buyer, the 101 time form U.S. rating. All four horses that have come back to run from that race, they have all regressed in their next start. There's a part of me that wonders if that 84 buyer is a little bit, a uh, little on the inflated side. Maybe he's a little bit vulnerable here. Let's talk about the other ward horse, the number six, Dixie Moe. This horse did not earn that big of a buyer speed figure in his debut at Indiana Grand. This is actually a filly who was entered in the Astoria, and I think Wesley's showing either some confidence here in running Dixie Moe against the Colts, or you think Miss Headley can't lose the Astoria. That's his two-year-old filly, his main two-year-old filly in that race. This horse sat off the pace, rallied nicely to win at Indiana Grand, has to do better. Yeah, I was going to say, from a number standpoint, she's just on the low side, but I do like the fact that she's shown that she can pass horses already. If the pace does heat up, which it looks like it might on paper, uh, she should be able to come with a bit of a bid, but she's going to need to improve facing boys and facing winners for the first time. Here's the Wesley Ward formulator fact for both Maven and Dixie Moe over the past five years. Two-year-old dirt sprints. These are debut winners returning in their second lifetime start in non-graded stakes races at Belmont. 40% winners, a $4.72 return on investment. Let's look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Maven is expected to be the early lead, but we've got a fleet Southern California invader shipping in. That is the number four, four left, who was a gate to wire winner going four and a half furlongs at Santa Anita and was flattered when both the runner up and one of the horses that dead heated for third both came back to win, the former scoring with a 78 buyer speed figure. I like four left's win, solid 67 buyer, but it's worth noting, Doug O'Neill, you usually has those horses cranked up for four and a half. It'll be interesting to see if he can hold this Colts form together for another race after a cross-country ship. Yeah, and, and you know, that's an important part to, to, to kind of factor in, that not only is this horse taking on winners for the first time, but he's doing it across country. This is not necessarily something that's easy on an early two-year-old. Uh, you brought up the fact that the second and third place finishers were both next out winners. The fourth, the sixth place finisher didn't really do a heck of a lot of running in his next start, but he did earn a 44, which was a higher speed figure than he earned in the career debut. So this horse is basically the opposite of what we spoke about with Maven, where all the horses that have exited that race, they've all improved their speed figure. If you want to look at it like that four left is certainly interesting let's talk about phil gleaves he has two in here we'll begin with the number three now is who made his career debut on the turf a little less than two weeks ago when he ran into two wesley ward train runners and it just wasn't going to work out for now is in that spot he is getting blinkers he does have a very strong pedigree albeit one that is geared towards turf but if you think this pace can fall apart i think there's something here with now is maybe he can get a piece at the very least yeah, I was going to say, it was an inoffensive debut. I thought the horse was up, prompted the pace, and when the real running started, just got a little bit outkicked. I thought it was a fine enough effort. The blinkers go on. I find that interesting. I find the move to dirt interesting. This is a confident placement for this horse in only a second lifetime start, and he's facing winners after not breaking his maiden yet. Um, I think he's interesting. I just I let the price be your guide. The other Gleaves train runner is Federale, who showed some pretty big speed in his debut at Delaware Park, sub-22 for the first quarter mile. And then he ran on to be second behind odds-on winner Tomato Bill. It was a useful performance, but the buyer came back real light. 
And I thought he just finished evenly. I know he was up there prompting a fast pace, but I, and he did some good things in there. Don't get me wrong. It's not like he didn't do any running. But at the same time, he's going to need to do considerably better, facing even a hotter pace projection this time around. The third maiden in this field is the number one, the Italian-American, going out for Gary Contessa. Limited positive data with this formulator fact over the past five years. Two-year-old dirt sprinters making their second lifetime start in non-graded stakes. 20% winners, a 222 ROI. This horse came with a strong run last time out to just miss against fellow New York Reds, but he did have a fast pace to attack. He draws a tough inside post here, but again, this horse looks fairly promising, and I wouldn't be surprised if he runs a bit late. I don't think the inside draw is going to be an issue. I would imagine he's taken back to last for the most part, come with that big run at the end like he did in that career debut. Uh, you brought up the thing that concerned me the most, though. I thought that was a complete pace meltdown, and I thought he took advantage of that. Now, perhaps he gets it again here on Friday afternoon, but I, to me, if you're using him, I'd be using him underneath. Let's take a look at our top selections for this year's Tremont Stakes. Matt, you're going with Steve Asmussen's train runner, the number seven memorable, and Asmussen's uh, Colt by Uncle Mo, I thought gave a very profound professional solid performance over a sloppy track in his debut. The runner-up came back uh, to hit the board in his very next start. I think memorable doesn't need to be that close to the pace. I think he can actually sit third or fourth behind a solid pace. And Asmussen usually has these horses ready to improve second time out. Yeah, and you brought up the thing that I liked the most was that this horse comfortably rated off the pace. It wasn't a matter of him pulling or being eager or anything like that. I thought he was very professional for a first-time starter. He went and got the horse that was setting the fractions. It was also a 4-5 to five Wesley Ward horse that he just went running by. I thought it was a good effort. I know it was a sloppy sealed track, and you always need to be a little bit leery about those performances. Uh, and then also you couple that with the fact that those the horses that have come out of that race, they've only earned mid and high 40 buyers, so they're certainly going to need to improve. Uh, but I like the versatility. I like the professionalism shown in that debut, and he should be a nice price. I'll take a stab with the eight rookie Salsa. He is the only uh, multiple starter in this field. He has raced twice. He has won twice, but he still has a lot to prove because in his debut at Laurel, he was 8-1. to one. In the Kentucky Juvenile, he was 27-1. to one. We talked about it a little bit yesterday in our Astoria Stakes preview. The Kentucky Juvenile has not come back very strong, but I like the professionalism that this Colt showed. He made a nice inside run on the far turn. He had to alter course to the outside in mid-stretch. Got a little bit lucky when one of the ralliers had to take up a bit in mid-stretch down towards the rail, but rookie Salsa seems to know what he's doing. He has a good mind about him. He should get some pace, but he's going to have to run a little faster. Yeah, he, he was the toughest call for me in here because we talked about it yesterday when we went over the Astoria and we just spoke about it again here. The field he defeated that day has come back dreadful thus far. But I look at the the tape and I say, you got to have some ability for you to be able to sort of alter course as significantly as he did and still be able to go on with it. Factoring in that it was his first time against winners, first time at a new track. I thought it was a good effort, and that's the thing. It's a difficult call for me, but I like that he is at least capable of sitting off of a pace, coming with a run, and staying on with it. The outside draw should work to his benefit, and I think he might get lost in the shuffle. I think he could end up being a better number than he probably should be. Maven, perhaps the horse to catch and beat. Give me numbers. Seven, four, eight, and two. I'm going eight, two, four, and seven. And the one hundred fifty thousand dollar Tremont Stakes, one of several stakes races at Belmont on Friday, one of a smorgasbord of stakes races, all Belmont Stakes Racing Festival. Take advantage of your exacta winners bonus by playing with your DRF Bets mobile account every race. Thursday through Saturday at Belmont, you get a ten percent exacta winners bonus. Learn more at Bets. Dot drf.com. Approximate post time for the Tremont, 409 Eastern. Good luck.